Okay, so question four. They give us this matrix B, they tell us what its eigenvalues are, that's all its eigenvalues, and then they give us a differential equation, a matrix differential equation, and ask us to solve it. So this is going to involve, ah, so I mean, because the matrix is not diagonal, it's a coupled differential equation, you know, the, the first row depends, x1 dash depends on x1 and x2, so we need to decouple it by diagonalizing, and that's why they've given us the eigenvalues to help us in the diagonalizing. So, oh, well, I suppose let me just remember how this process will go. So, we have x dash equals bx plus 1, 1. We're going to diagonalize b, so that means that b will be written as p to the minus 1, b, p equals d, for some p in d, and then that means we should make the substitution uh, y, no, um, yeah, x equals py, so then the equation, that means that x dash will become py dash, because p is just a constant matrix, so then the equation will become py dash equals b p y plus, if I call that, that vector there, I'll call it b for now, uh, then we will, oh, we'll multiply, multiply both sides by the inverse of p, so that will cause this thing to become d, and this to become p inverse vector p, b, then this will be a decoupled equation, so we'll be able to solve it for y, and then we'll be able to get what y is, because y will be p inverse x, okay, so that'll be the process. So the first thing to do is to diagonalize. So we've given, they've given us the eigenvalues, minus 2 and minus 6, so we just need to use the eigenvector equation. Is this question 4 or question 5? Question 4. We just need to use the eigenvector equation to look at, yeah, to solve. So we have, what, the matrix is minus 3, minus 3, 1, 3, minus 5, so we have minus 3, minus minus 2. So minus 3 plus 2, which is minus 1, then 1, then 3, and then minus 5 plus 2 is minus 3. So that's V minus 2, so that's the eigenvector for the eigenvalue minus 2. And the, equation, the eigenvector equation is that equals 0, um, or it is when you rearrange it. So now we could do what? We could do row 3 plus 3 times row 1. So then we get 0, 0, and we could also do at the same time minus row 1. So they have 1 minus 1. Okay. And then this means that v minus 2 can equal, um, what, can equal 1 minus 1, right? Need to, those things need to cancel. Or any multiple of that, obviously. Now we do the same for if the eigenvalue is minus 6. So we have minus 3 minus minus 6. So minus 3 plus 6 is 3, then 1. And then we have 3, and then minus 5 plus 6 is 1. Okay. And then we have v, this is minus 6, 0. So now we can do, we can do row 2 minus row 1. And that says that 3, 1, 0, 0, v minus 6 equals the 0 vector. And now this means that v minus 6 can equal what? Um, for example, it can be 1 minus 3. Okay. So that means that if p is... 1 minus 1, 1 minus 3, and if d is minus 2 minus 6 on the diagonal and then 0 is elsewhere. Oh, you know what, we should actually just check that this, that this really, these two things really are eigenvectors. So let me just check. So the, the matrix b was minus 3, 3, 1, minus 5. So if you multiply that by 1 minus 1, what do you get? You get, you get minus 3 minus 1 which is minus 4, 
That's not looking good. Minus 3, 1, 3 minus 5. Minus 5, 1 minus 1. You get minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4. 3 plus 5 is 7. Ooh, no, that's that's not good. Oh, it's well, 1 minus 1. This has to be 1, 1. Yes. Thank God I checked. We have 1, 1 here. 1, 1. Okay. Minus 3. So it's nice. Minus 3 plus 1. It's minus 2. And 3 minus 5 is minus 2. And that is indeed minus 2 times 1, 1. So that's... Now we fixed it is correct. Don't need that. And uh, here we have... So we have minus 3, 1, 3, minus 5. Matrix B times by 1 minus 3. We get minus 3, minus 3. That's minus 6. And 3 plus 15, it's 18. And is that is minus, that is minus 6 times or minus 3, yes. So the eigenvalues are correct now. Um, let me remember to change it here, correct that there. Okay, so T is this and D is this. We now know that that's, uh, that's, that D equals P inverse B. P. Okay, so the equation, the equation was, the equation was, what was it? The equation was x dash equals bx plus 1, 1. And let me now just continue on another piece bit by the page. So the equation was x dash equals bx plus 1, 1. And now we are saying let's... We're saying, what, did we, what was our plan? Was to say let x equal py. Oh, well, actually, rather say let y equal p inverse x. Let y equal p inverse x just because it makes sense to define y in terms of x. And so that means that, of course, that x will be py, so this equation will become px dash equals bp... What? The equation will become... I should write this out. So x equals py, so the equation becomes py dash equals b, p, y, plus 1, 1. Okay, now we multiply th both sides by p inverse to get y dash equals p inverse b, p, y. Oh, that's just, that's just d, y, plus p inverse 1, 1. Okay, so we're going to need to find p inverse. So let me do that up here where we talked about, where we, where we had p. So p inverse... It'll be, it'll be 1 over the determinant, first of all. So the determinant is minus 3 minus 1. The determinant is minus a quarter. Then it's the conjugate of the transpose. Sorry, no, it's the transpose of the cofactor matrix. So what's cofactor? The cofactor of 1 is minus 3. The cofactor of minus 3 is 1. Uh, the cofactor of the, the cofactor of the thing in the top right is minus 1 because it's... It's a odd entry. The cofactor of the entry in the lower is also minus one. And so then do the transpose, and you get minus three. Uh, it doesn't change actually because it's symmetric. Okay. So that's supposedly in the inverse. Let's just check it's the inverse. So p. Check it by going p inverse times p, or the other way around. I just did it this way around so that the minus quarter can be at the front. Uh, it's minus 3, minus 1, minus 1, 1, times by 1, 1, 1, minus 3. What you get? You get minus a quarter times, you have minus 3, minus 1, minus 4, minus 3 plus 3, 0, minus 1 plus 1, 0, minus 1 minus 3, minus 4. Yes, that's correct. So that, that definitely is the inverse. This is 
we don't need to show that, that's just checking. Okay, so the inverse then is minus a quarter, minus three, minus one, minus one, one. Um, so you can use that over here. So we have that, if I write this out now, we have y1, y2, dash, dash, equals, so the diagonal matrix is got minus 2, minus 6 on the diagonal, and then zeros off the diagonal, plus, well, actually it's minus a quarter times by minus 3, minus 1, minus 1, 1, and then here we have 1, 1. So we actually do this multiplication now. We're going to get what? The top row will be y1 dash equals, oh, I forgot the y in here. Y. The y goes there. The y is actually y1 and y2, of course. Minus, okay. So y1 dash is equal to minus 2y1. Now this top row becomes what? Minus 3 minus 1, so you end up with 4 times by a minus quarter. So. Oh, you have, so you have minus 4 times the minus quarter, so you end up with plus 1 for that. And y2 dash equals minus 6y2. Um, minus 6y2. And then what you have, you have minus 1, oh, 0. Yes, that's nice. So that's y1 and y2 dash. So y2 dash will be easy to solve, particularly easy to solve. y1, that'll require thinking about, thinking about it like this. So y1 dash, it's the integrating factor thing, plus 2y1 equals 1. And we want to get this, times it by something, so that the left-hand side becomes the result of the product rule. Um, and so the thing to do would be to get that 2 there, in the second term, we could times it by e to the two e to the two t two t y one dash plus two e to the two t y one equals and then e to the two t on the right hand side as well. Now, now that left hand side then that is the result of a product rule. The product rule for derivatives applied to that. So now we integrate both sides, and we get e to the two t y1 then is just the integral of e to the 2t, which is a half e to the 2t. Now we need to const add the constant, c. So now you, you times throughout by e to the minus 2t to solve for y1, and you're going to get a half plus c e to the minus 2t, OK? Um, let's just check that is correct. So, what is y1 dash going to this? y1 dash is minus 2c e to the minus 2t. So, we minus 2c e to the minus 2t, does that equal minus 2, minus 2 times a half, which is minus 1, minus 2 times c e to the minus 2t plus 1? Yes, it does. Okay, so that one is correct. Um, now we also want to solve, figure out what y2 is. Um, so it's, much, it's straightforward. It's y2 equals e to the, well, sorry, a constant times e to the, minus 6t, right? Um, let me change this constant here, c. Should I change that to a, rather? OK, so, oh, so this one. I also want to call this one a as well. OK. So we've got y1 and y2. So now we need to use them to get x. And how do we say we're going to do that? We're going to say that we have the x equals py. Okay. You know, I think I explained 
think I talked about things wrongly here, but it's fine. X equals PY. So we have X equals PY. Um, so this means that X1, X2 is equal to P times Y. So P, what was P? P was... P was... 1, 1, 1 minus 3. 1, 1, 1 minus 3. So that gets times by uh, y1 is a half plus a e to the minus 2t. And y2 is b e to the minus 6t. Okay, so you do that timesing. Uh, what do you get? You get, I'm running out of space here. You get, you get, top you have half. Half plus a e to the minus two t plus b e to the minus six t, and here you have half plus a e to the minus two t minus three b e to the minus six t. So now this will factorize or should factorize into factors that just have like the eigen the eigen the eigen vectors are the vectors. So um, apologies for the Apologies for the different size lines here. Okay, so we start. So you know, I'm going to factorize. Not, I mean, s split that up into terms. So first of all, we have what well, we have half times one one plus a e to the minus two t times one one plus. In fact, you know what? It's nicer to write that as a half plus a e to the minus 2t times by 1, 1 plus b e to the minus 6t times 1, 3. So you see each 1 minus 3, so each factor. So it's like these eigenvectors, the eigenvectors and then the, the solutions. Okay, that's it.